What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm actually in the middle of painting a guitar right now that is part of a top secret project. So if you want to see what guitar this is, you're going to have to sign up to my Patreon because it's a top secret guitar and it's only for the Patreon members. Eventually this guitar will be up on Trash to Thrash, but I've given a special preview over to the Patreon members. And also if you see this Alien Blood Roads behind me, there's a full episode coming out. Not quite Trash to Thrash, but similar. That's also going to be up on the Patreon. So. Go sign up to the Patreon if you guys want to see those two guitars. I'm also working on a few other things today though. We're going to be doing some unboxings. We got a couple of guitars in. We got some parts that were sent in from somebody that are really cool and unique that I've never seen before. And I'm going to be painting something else that's not quite a guitar. So I'll show you guys all that coming up right now. Oh yeah, and I'm also going to be dropping a kill switch in a guitar that recently sold. It's the Dean Dave Mustaine signature model that I had had up for sale on Reverb and on my website. Somebody bought that guitar, so they want a kill switch installed in it. We're going to be dropping a kill switch in it and maybe even getting it ready to ship today. So we'll see how the day goes. And if I got time, we'll box it up and get it out of here. All right, guys, I just fired up the soldering iron. We're going to drop a kill switch in this Dean Dave Mustaine VMNT X model. And it actually has independent volumes on it right now. So it's a bridge volume, neck volume, master tone, three way selector switch. And we're going to combine the two volumes into one volume so this is going to become the master volume and the kill switch is going to go in this control one spot right here where the old volume was so pretty simple right now the way it's wired is the two pickups each one has its own volume so they wire up to the volumes and then the volumes go to the switch here then the switch goes to the output jack but we're going to re be rewiring it a bit so that the pickups are going to wire directly to the switch the switch will go to the volume and then the volume will go out to the output jack and then we'll work the kill switch into that wiring, which is very easy to do. So we're going to add an Iron Age kill switch. We got one in that my cat found and attacked the packaging on. Anytime I leave plastic on my office work desk, uh, the cat finds it and she chews it up. And luckily someone found this one before it got scratched up or anything. You know, she just got to it right when we got right when we uh, found her. So she didn't have much time to work on it, but. Yeah, this is the one we're going with. It's a non-LED Iron Age kill switch. It's called the Stealth, and it's got the cool Iron Age logo on there. So it's only two wires to wire up, very simple to wire up. And it, one of them basically, basically is going to be a ground. They don't. It doesn't matter which one goes to ground, which one goes to the hot wire, but the two wires here, I'll do the black one to the ground just to keep it consistent. And then the red one is going to go to the hot or the signal, which is going to be something that's going to go to either to the output jack or or after the volume. Whatever comes out of that volume is going to be like a, a a signal that we can tap into that's going to affect both pickups. We could wire it up to the output jack or even the tone in this case, but we're going to do it to the volume. I always like to do it to the volume. While that thing's heating up, that hot soldering iron, we're going to go out back and I'm going to set up a little jig that I have for painting a head. And I'll show you that right now. All right, guys, this is the head I'm going to be painting. So my daughter likes to work on crafts and one of the things she's into right now is modifying dolls and making custom dolls. So she painted this one all white. This used to have like a face on it, like a typical doll toy that you would buy would, but she's painted it all white to give herself like a base to draw her own face onto. So what she does is she'll paint it white, have me come in, hit it with a couple flash coats of matte clear, and then she'll do some more color over it. I'll come back and I'll do it again. and kind of build it up and seal in all the four, you know, the former coats that we're putting on or that she's putting on. So you can actually see, if you come right over here in the light, you can actually see some of the uh, brush strokes on it right now. It's almost a little creepy. It reminds me of like one of those uh, creatures from Toy Story. Remember Sid next door <laughs> on Toy Story? He would like take dolls off, you know, his daughter, his sister's toys and put them on like erector sets and stuff. So. We're bringing this into the spray booth. We really don't need to do it in the booth. I was going to do it outside earlier, but uh, that, that guitar I was painting, that custom Wolfgang, I really wanted to give it my full attention. So in between coats, I was actually just chilling and like going over my notes and stuff like that instead of normally I would have other tasks going, but I wanted to, I wanted to focus purely on that guitar because that's the paint I put on it was a hundred bucks for just the paint. And then, uh, and the stenciling and all the work I put into it, I didn't really want to have to redo any of that stuff. So 
For this one, we're just going to be using some 2X matte clear. I like this matte clear. And just as if we're going to be doing some high-end painting, we got the air compressor here. Get some, get all the dust off it. Hit it with the tack cloth. I made this little jig thing to hold the doll's head because I painted a couple of them for her. And I just kind of haze it on, very easy. It's not even wearing a mask for this, just gonna be a couple quick hits. And I'll be back out in five or ten minutes to do it again. Two coats should be enough. Another thing I did on this guitar is if you saw the video where I put this up for sale, I had uh, shown that corners were pretty chipped up, but I actually went out and bought some black nail polish and it had a couple dent, you know, big chips in there. And this horn is actually looking good. I just filled in these two parts here. It's nail polish, when you're working with a black guitar, it's easy to match because you just buy black nail polish. But if it's got like big deep chips on the corners there, you can actually fill the chips because nail polish is very thick. So it's a black lacquer, a very thick lacquer. And yeah, that side's done. This side, you can see it still has, it's kind of hard to tell here. Let me, let me adjust this lighting, get it nice and bright for you. So yeah, you can see now this edge over here, it's not gonna look perfect, but it's gonna at least make it so that there's not a giant chunk missing. And you know, people from three feet away will never even notice at all. So it makes your guitar just look a little bit, a little better. I obviously I did this for free because I said in the video, you know, if this is what will hold you back from buying this guitar, then I will repair those edges for free. So um, we also need to take the knob off here and then open up the back of the guitar and start desoldering a couple things, remove the knob and get that hole for the kill switch drilled. So we'll be doing that right now too. All right, now we got the control one removed. We got the two pickups desoldered from the output or from the switch, and we got the new master volume dewired, desoldered too. So, this red wire is going to be our bridge wire, bridge pickup wire. This yellow one is our neck pickup. So those two are going to go over here. Then we're going to want to wire our output jack, which is this one here, um, over to our selector switch. So I'll actually probably jump the selector switch over to the tone where it's already wired up using this wire run this over to here bada bing bada boom pretty easy there are a lot of ways i could have wired it but i ultimately decided to wire the selector switch over to the volume and then the tone and the output over to the volume as well this thing here is a solder sucker so you push this in and it compresses down a spring inside and when you press this button it actually suctions and pulls out hot solder here and then when you push this back in it ejects the solder so we're going to clean off this pot here it has a bunch of extra solder on it nice and clean now I can stick a wire back through that hole same thing with this middle terminal which is going to be our output both of those look beautiful now because we're going to wire a couple things up to that. So we'll wire from the switch to the volume is going to go in the first one. And then we're also going to want to put a kill switch wire in there. So we'll leave that unsoldered for a minute, but we're going to solder this top wire here and this ground to the pot. All right, so this thing's re rewired now. We just gotta drill the hole and add these two wires in for the kill switch. I am noticing this wall here is pretty close to this pothole, so that might make it a little tricky. Hopefully there's enough space in there that we can get the nut tightened without having to get the Dremel out and extending over, but we shall see. First, let's go add another coat to the head. Now we'll drill out the old pothole for the larger kill switch hole. All right, I'm gonna bring this outside and blow it off with air real quick so we get all that dust and sawdust or wood dust off it. 
Beautiful. Nice clean drill hole. Give it a quick wipe off to get anything extra off there. Dang, we are going to have to get the Dremel out. I thought there was enough room for the nut. There's not. So it's an easy, easy little fix though. All right, here we got this Dremel and we got the sanding drum on the end here. So that's what I'm going to use to kind of dig out a little bit of that edge up there. It was nice and quick and easy. And there we go. We got it in. Hardly fits, but it does. So now we got these two wires to connect. Couldn't be much easier, to be honest. The red's just going to go to the first terminal of the volume pot, and the black will go to the ground of the volume pot. Terminal three, as I call them. If this guitar only had one volume, or we were going to leave it with two volumes, this would have been way quicker. We would have just had to connect the two wires to install the kill switch. But this guitar, we were modifying the wiring, so it did add a little more time to the job. Now I'll plug it in and make sure the volume, tone, the selector switch, and the kill switch all work. Alright, the new master volume works perfect, the master tone works perfect, the selector switch works perfect, and the kill switch works perfect. So, success. This thing is ready for a little more touch up on the chip corner here, and then let it dry, let it build up a little more, maybe do two or three little, little, um, what would you call that? Little dabs. We'll like dab it. <laughs> and then it'll be ready to ship out tomorrow. So now we got a couple guitars to unbox. Let's get these guitars and packages opened up. I want to show you someone sent something really cool into me and some of you may have already seen it on Sunday Morning Shred, but either way I want to show you guys. This video would have ended up running over a half an hour and that's too long for a vlog. So the guitar boxings will actually be the part two to this video coming next week. Same time, same place, same channel right here on Guitar Guts 2. I will leave you with this one hint. One of them's a BC Rich, and one of them's a bass. I guess that was two hints, but thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you soon. Rock on, my friends.